everybody welcome back it's Joey again you're watching Vegas D Tech and we're back with another e-bike review and today guys behind me we're going to be taking a look at the Allure by Yui bike this bike is a 750 watt folding big tire e-bike now while this Allure e-bike is one beautiful well put together bike does it offer any features or benefits that separate it or make it any different than any of the other bikes that are in its class let's take a look Now guys, a lot of you folks have been telling me, Joey, when you uh, do these review on these bikes, we would really appreciate it if you would actually get on it so that we can have a perspective as to how big the actual bike is, okay? So I'm gonna jump on it. I am uh, six feet tall, 215 pounds, and this is what I look like on the bike. Alrighty guys, so this is a folding e-bike style here, okay? It's a 750 watt motor. The battery is going to be a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour Samsung LG battery, and it has a five to six hour charge time. You'll still have your typical Shimano seven uh, speed thumb index shifter. The bike is rated for 60 miles of range with a maximum weight limit of 300 pounds. And as far as the handlebar setup, guys, we're going to have the typical paddle type grips here that you can rest your palms on. It has a half throttle uh, horn on the right hand side. On the other side, you're gonna have your mode button up and down options here for your power assist levels. It does come with uh, manual operated brakes front and rear. The brakes are going to be 160 millimeter brakes with the manual cable brake style caliper. We do have a rear shock back here that uh, the website says is rated for 750 pounds. The front shocks do have preload adjustment and lockout. So wide open if you want bounce and if you want it stiff, just full lockout. To power it on, we'll just hold on the M button here. Typical dash will come on. On the dash here, you're gonna have up on top here, you're gonna have your miles per hour, your current battery, power assist levels, and how many miles you currently have on it. To turn on your light, you're gonna hold on the button here for two seconds. Front light should come on. It does, and I love these lights here, the quad LED style. They kick out enough light for such a small little unit, it shines a great amount of light coming forward. And it's got your uh, buzzer horn here. On the back, it will have the tail light with brake. We do have rear and front plastic mud guards. On one of the other bikes that I was reviewing, it uh, had a metal fender here and the chain, every time that you, know, you would jump around on the chain, the chain would smack right into here and it would, uh, make dents and noises and stuff like that. And this one right here, the factory made a little cutout right here so that this thing has some uh, room to fly in between. Now let me go ahead and do a quick little fold up of it. If you're gonna do a folding bike, makes no sense not to show how it's done, right? Okay, typical, we'll do it up here on the handle, down here on the side, put my knee in the middle, bring it around. And then you have that little cradle on the bottom where you'll just rest it. And there you have it. And then to put it back together, I'll just bring this thing back out. 
lock it in, lock it down, bring up the handles, lock that in, kickstand down, and we're ready to go. All right, guys, here's a look at it. This is the 20-inch uh, folding bike. It's the Allure by Yui bike. Let's build it. Alrighty guys, that is it. Took about a quick 30, about 30, 35 minutes to put it together. Um, anything difficult? Not really, if you buy this bike, all you're gonna have to do is throw that front wheel on. It does have a couple of spacers, wide on one side, thin on the other. The thin spacer is gonna be on the uh, rotor side, the wide spacer will be on the opposite. You'll need to attach your headlight, your front fender, and uh, that's it guys, just put in the uh, handlebar onto the neck. Battery is about 25% charged. I'm gonna go ahead and run through and do a quality on this bike, which will consist of checking the front axles, making sure they're torqued down correctly, checking the clearances on the uh, brakes, make sure they're not rubbing. I'm gonna check the derailleur, go through the gears. I will air up the tires, make sure they're appropriate, and then uh, charge up the battery. I'll see you guys outside and see what she can do. Alrighty guys, now that we're done, let's get to what's really important. Let's run it down the track here and see the kind of performance that we have. What kind of speeds that we get out of it, average and climbing. Let's go over the bridge, check the uh, brakes, and I'll give you my full rundown as to what I think about this Allure by Yui Bike. All right guys, so we had a pretty bad storm out here yesterday. And every time I come out to the test track out here after the storm, look at all this rubbish and rubble that's out here. I'm gonna attempt to, uh, I'm gonna attempt to get past all this and do a test. I don't know who gets to clean all this stuff up. Eventually it'll just work its way back or work its way off. But in the meantime, I gotta do this test ride on this bike out here. All right, man, I got this thing on power assist five. Man, this bike is just one big beefy bike, man. You know, I mean, I've seen folding bikes, you know, 20 inch folding bikes. 
and I've seen 20 inch folding bikes and this guy is a definite monster truck of folding bikes. Man, just take a look at all this rubble out here. I got the suspension locked out right now. We're gonna go ahead and get a run going on here. Averaging uh, 24.8, 25 miles an hour. Going up a slight incline, 26, 25.3. Man, these big beefy tires are nice. Uh, you have a little bit more confidence, man, when you're riding around on the big four inch tire. Ooh, had my suspension locked out, man. No rebound. When you guys have your suspension locked out and you have no rebound, when you hit them big dips, you better hold on for dear life, man, because the bike will shoot up on you. All right, 29, 30 miles an hour, guys. I got 29.8. Power assist level five. Man, the bike does not feel like it's struggling at all, man. You know, plenty to give. 27 miles an hour, 27, 28. Coming down this next dip before we start our uh, climb up here on the backside of St. Rose Bridge. Dropping a little bit here, guys, on throttle only. 23.7 miles an hour climbing up this grade. Coming across the bridge right now. Averaging 21, 22 miles an hour. Coming down the backside. Look at all the traffic here, guys. It is about that time of the day. And once again, I'm on the back bike path here, blowing by all this nonsense. All right, I better slow it down, man. Look at all this crap in the road. Oh, man, big beefy tires. Thank goodness for that. If you guys got bike paths like this, in your neighborhood, utilize it, man. I have no problem taking a bike to work if I have to, when I can bypass all this traffic and come out here. All right, guys, 28.3, just ghost pedaling, 28.7, 29 miles an hour. Throttle wide open on pedal assist level five, 29.7. Nice smooth ride, quiet motor. Man, this bike is really nice, man. Wait till you hear the price on it, it'll shock you. 30 miles an hour, 31 miles an hour. We're right behind uh, Green Valley Ranch Casino right now, hitting 31.2 miles an hour. And this bike is riding smooth today, man. Man, averaging an easy 30 miles an hour on this bike. GPS differential is about one and a half miles an hour difference. So if it says 31.8, we're probably doing 30.8, but I can't uh, cry about a one, one and a half mile per hour differential. 31.9. All right, guys, coming to the end of the bike trail here as we uh, come to the entrance of the Green Valley Ranch Casino up the uh, Palms Corridor. And we're gonna go ahead and make a U-turn and head on back. All right, coming back guys, pedaling. I got the pedal assist level five. Now, the one thing I will say about this, it doesn't have a lot of like the, that acceleration torque. You know, it's got a, once again, it's one of those bikes that's got that very linear acceleration, but it will get you to your top end speed. You just gotta give it a little bit of time to work its magic. 22.5, 27. Yeah, man, the suspension on this bike is completely awesome. I, I can't believe that such a big bike here has such a nice suspension setup. Ah, that's what it is, guys. We're running into a massive headwind. Massive headwind is pushing us down into 24.5, 25 miles per hour going back. We're getting 30 miles an hour coming this way, coming the other way because we had the wind blowing into us. And like I said, going into the wind, we're averaging 25.5 miles an hour. We're gonna run through all this rubble with the big four inch tires. Man, what confidence, man. All that crap that was in the road, those big knobby four inch tires come in so handy, you don't sweat the small stuff. 
when you're rocking the big beefy tires like that. All right, coming up the uh, back hill side, we're doing 17 miles per hour, 16.1, with the wind blowing into us. Coming across St. Rose Bridge, going back the other way, catching a little bit more speed now, 19, 20 miles an hour. Heading down the backside. Throttle wide open, 29, 30 miles an hour, even with a headwind. 31 miles an hour, 28 miles an hour, 27. We still got a headwind and uh, throttle wide open with a headwind, 27, 28 miles an hour, seeing 29. Now the battery is saying 71% and I just recharged this thing, full battery power prior to coming out here. It normally says that when you're uh, under load, all right, so when you're pushing into the wind and you're climbing up grades, you're gonna be uh, taxing the battery pretty hard. Now what normally happens is that as I let go of the throttle and I allow the uh, battery to recover and catch its breath, that 71% should jump back up. Cause I definitely don't think that we've used that much power on this little bit of a run. All right, it's just dropped down to 68%. Twenty five point eight, twenty five point nine miles an hour. Down another dip. Man, this seat is comfortable. I do not feel anything, man, at all. Normally I would be crying. That back suspension is really sucking up the bumps, man. Man, just look at all this garbage out here. Jesus. All right, watch out for the gravel. So I'm off the throttle, pedal assist alone. 18.3 miles an hour, we're uh, showing 70% battery. I'll just freewheel and see if it'll recover. There he goes, look, it just, it just jumped up to 90, now it's saying 100%. Okay, so I'm pedaling right now and uh, it went down to 68%, but like I was telling you guys, when you've, got the, when you've got the battery under load and you're holding it wide open on uh, full throttle, you're gonna get a different reading on your percentages, but when you actually come off, when you come off the uh, throttle, it'll go right back up to what it's supposed to be, and right now it's showing 100% uh, battery. Because I knew that, I know that from a full charge, we didn't use that much energy. So alrighty guys, we're back out here at the uh, St. Rose overpass. And uh, I always come out here to test the ability of a bike to climb grades. This is gonna be an eight degree slope or 15% grade. And uh, we're gonna go up here and uh, just use strictly, strictly throttle and see what we got, okay? So the battery has uh, recovered. It's saying 100%, but I know that we use a lot of juice on that run. So I'm gonna trust that it's right around 80%. And I'm gonna get over here, man, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and climb on this. Most typical bikes can get 12. The real good ones can get more than 12 mile per hour hours on the climb. So let's just get up here and go. So here we are, full throttle, eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour. 10 miles an hour. All right, 10 miles an hour. Like I said, most of these bikes are able to get around 12. All right, so uh, yeah, a little bit of difficulty here. It'll get you up, but it has a little bit more difficulty climbing. You got 10 right here. Yeah, normally I could see 12, 10 and 11 uh, miles per hour on the climb. This is always the part where I put my, uh, this is all a test of faith right here, guys, when we do our brake test. I always come down here we got this 15% uh, down slope, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and check these brakes. Like I said, these are 160 millimeter rotors with manual brakes, okay guys? No hydraulic manual. Uh, typically, I get up to about 17 mile per hour, and I nail it and hold on for dear life before we get down to the edge of the rail, so let's go. We hit 17, 18, braking. 
right. So we did get some uh, decent skids on here. Now I noticed that the uh, the skids were give and go. I was catching a little bit of skids and it was letting go and catching and letting go. So uh, not sure about that situation. Normally when I'm able to lock it, it'll fully lock and stay that way, but the brakes were catching and giving, a little bit of catching and giving on this. So we're gonna go ahead and try it again down the second part of the slope. Again, it's a uh, eight degree down slope, 15% grade. And we're gonna try it again. And I really wish that they didn't have that wall down there because like I said, if anything happens, man, I mean, I'm gonna be colliding into that wall at 17 miles an hour and uh, it's not a good deal. But anyways, let's do it. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. We're at 17 right now, 18. Ooh, got the good, got the good brakes on that one. You guys heard that one. We got the good brakes on at that time. I don't know if the brakes just needed to heat up and catch, but they grabbed really, really well. Let's take a look at the skid, guys. This skid started from right here, all right? So you see how far we went. So, so starting from right here to there, I'm looking at a good 25, 25, 25 foot of skid. Take a look at this, you know? Of course, you know, as I get closer to that wall, I get more scared and I really, really put the squeeze on, but you can see the skid mark right here. So hey, I got nothing to say bad about the uh, brakes on this right here. Like I said, you know, a lot of people demand that a bike this big with this kind of power should come as a industry standard with 180 millimeter uh, rotors and hydraulic brakes. This doesn't have that. It's the 160 with the manual brakes and you've seen the skid mark right here, you got 25 to 30 feet of skid. Hello. Alrighty guys, we're gonna go wrap up down here. We're heading back to my favorite gratitude park. It's always empty, that's the way I like it. Well, I do see somebody hiding back behind here. But uh, yeah, for the most part, man, it's just beautiful. It's very, very Asian influenced type of, of uh, plants. I used to see these type of plants a lot out in Okinawa, you know, when my dad was in the Air Force and we were stationed in Kadena. So I kind of like it, man, out here. It's a little Asian influence. Alrighty, guys, so this is my wrap-up of the Allure by Yui Bike. What do I think about it? Man, this is a great bike. I tell you, it's getting very, very difficult for me to find a lot of faults unless I'm really trying to nitpick a bike. The quality of these bikes are actually getting better. I don't think that I've actually had a garbage bike yet. I mean, every bike, in my opinion, has their good and bad points. And some of the bad points, it's not even bad. It's just things that are not available on this bike that were on other models, you know. I'm gonna shock you at the price of this. Normal sale price is $1,199, and that Yui bike is selling this bike on special right now for 849 bucks. But let's take a look at some of the pros and cons. One of the big pros is the quality of the ride that we get from these big 20 by four CST BFT tires. Also the rear suspension on this guys, the rear shock and the independent suspension, man, that is one beautiful configuration that they've done here. The build quality on this bike, man, just take a look at this paint. This paint is absolutely beautiful guys. It's not, and, it, and this looks like stickers, it ain't no stickers. This is actual true paint with clear gloss over it. It's just got a beautiful build quality to it. Batteries integrated inside. A lot of times guys, when you got good solid paint on a bike and they're a folding style bike, the uh, folding process of the hinge becomes very difficult to bend because of all that paint inside of there. The Allure is kind of tight in folding it up. It's just gonna need a little bit of time to break that paint bond that's inside the hinge and this thing should be able to fold up smooth. The uh, S830 uh, instrument cluster here is nice and big, easy to read. Miles per hour are nice and uh, readable. Your power assist level is nice and readable. Overall, I like it dead smack in the center where it is and I like how big these numbers are. Very easy to read. Now, as far as some of the things that I think could be better on the bike, these fenders here look a little bit cheesy for it being plastic. I mean, this cutout right here looked like a uh, looks kind of like somebody just took a razor and just cut this thing out. I mean, it does the job. 
you want to nitpick something like that. The uh, handles on this thing, I remember when I first got the handles, they just came right out. You know, they just popped right off like this. It was constantly sliding around. It looks like there's like oil on here or something like that. I'm not too sure what that is, but it's just the, the handles slide around quite a bit. If there was a third thing I needed to complain about, it would just be the ability to trust in the power of the, uh, the, the meter that I'm reading here. Because I've seen this thing, like I said, when I was on, when I was on Power Assist 5, even though I've charged this thing up to full, look at right now it's saying 100, but while I was on it, it dropped all the way down to 68. So maybe if I could just get the current, if I could switch this thing into volts, that'd be a lot better for me because I trust the volts better than I trust these gauges right here. Uh, the next thing that I was going to talk about is when we were doing that grade climb, a lot of bikes that I have uh, reviewed, they've always been able to hit at least 12 miles per hour climbing up that 8 degree grade. And this one right here was only able to hit like 10 on average. I think I saw 11. So torque wise, the torque on this is a little bit low. What it makes up for is linear in power curb, is very linear. And then, of course, I think it makes up for itself in the top end because it will get you up to 28 and it likes to cruise up in the top end. But the uh, low end is going to be where the problem is. I don't really feel like a whole bunch of torque at the bottom, especially if you're climbing grades. So overall, guys, it's hard to fault this Allure bike. It's a really quality bike. And for $849, it'd be hard pressed for me to pass on it and say that you're not getting a value. I'm gonna give this bike a four out of five. I really wanna give it like a four and a half. I think that it's missing a little bit of that bottom end torque. You know, I'd like to be able to see these bikes climb, you know, the typical uh, cross bridge grade, you know, with a little bit more, you know, uh, aggressiveness than this bike was able to do. I almost like torque, bottom end torque, more than I like top end speed because I need that bottom end torque to get me out across traffic, get me out of bad situations, and to be able to get me up inclines. Those are very important to me. So if I had that, also if the uh, battery uh, had that volt meter on it to where I could trust the volts more than just the percentages, I think that would have pushed it up into the four and a half range for me. So guys, if you like this Allure by Yui Bike and you wanna pick one up for yourself, or if you just need more information on the bike itself, you can go ahead and go to the website. I have a link down in the description. The bike is $1,199 normal price, and right now it's $849 on sale. If there's any other promotions or discount codes that I can give you, I will link that down in the description as well. But anyways, guys, that's everything I got for you today. We're in the golden hour, which is the last half hour of the day, which is the most perfect time that I love to come outside. And uh, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with that. Thank you so much again for coming out with me on another e-bike review. I'm Joey, you're watching Vegas D-Tech. Thank you so much again. You guys be well. I'll catch you guys in the next e-bike review. Bye now.